Hello, welcome. Welcome back if you're a current subscriber. Welcome if you're new. So we're going to do a chop and chat. So probably I'm going to do this in two parts because I have a lot of Teddy Bees. So we're going to start with the other vendors and then we're going to go to Teddy Bees. And I'm just going to talk. All right, so this one from Harper James is Pumpkin Pretzel Latte. April gifted this to me. So I went through some of my Harper James and I wanted, to, how cute are those? I wanted to pull the wax that was from oh how loud is that going to be on my mic hopefully that's not bad i might have to test it so i did move the mic so let's just make sure that's better because boy i was thinking this is probably going to be really loud on my mic because it was on the same table okay now we're all set so that is done we're going to put that away so i just moved my mic because, wow, I forget how, like, it's on the same table. So it's literally going to uh, pick up all the vibrations of the table. So there's that one. So like I said, the Salty Pumpkin. I went and looked at the dates. And she just started putting dates on in 20, some of the 2023 so I pulled any 2023 or any without date. So Salty Pumpkin is amazing. Now I didn't or order from Mary's pre-order because I have all these and I'm like, I would love to support her, but obviously have enough wax and uh, I need to get through my wax, right? So I do cut these in half. I don't know. Do you guys do that? I do only because... I don't feel like I need that much in my warmers and uh, so I generally do unless like maybe I'll leave the bot these two because I do have warmers that are higher wattage and can handle like that but generally I will and generally with her I usually cut them in half and again this just helps me so that when I go to grab a scent if it's not chopped sometimes i won't grab it so we'll just do the top four and cut them next up is autumn craze wait if you hear a mower that is my husband mowing i did not realize he was gonna go mow the second i started doing this but that would be my hubby mowing i can hear him i don't know if you can my Son, my oldest son starts college tomorrow, so today he went to his girlfriend's to hang out for a bit. And yeah, oops, he starts college tomorrow, which is totally crazy. I just can't believe that, like, he's already that old. I again, I saw some photos on Instagram that I did, like, a memory collage of him. Made me a little bit sad, you know. I loved my kids when they were little, like. You know, kids are just such great. They just look at the world so amazingly without bias. And they just are just kind little souls. Okay, sorry. Next is ghostly good. So I, yeah, I miss my kids that age. So it is bittersweet seeing them grow up and being independent and, you know. But I told him today, I'm like, go get your iPad. Well, he's like, can't you go get it? And then just, I was like, um, no, you need to go get your iPad. Like, you're an adult. He's going to be 19 on the 20th here. Uh, so, but I don't know if he's going to go today or not. So we'll see. I probably will end up having to go today. Um, it's not, a, I don't think it's the end of the world if he doesn't have his iPad the first day, you know, a couple days, because... I'm sure he's going to be getting used to school and a different different than high school right uh, so he is going to be oops pumpkin chai he is going to school to be a band teacher that's his goal so he's taking classes in music and education um he told us from a, he this kid plays music from morning till night he told us from a young age you know he wanted to be a musician it's like well you also need a degree, like, what do you want to do with that degree? Because, you know, you can play all kinds of gigs and, you know, things like that. But what are you going to do for, to support a family or, you know, whatever. And uh, 
my kids keep telling me they're not going to have kids and I am just not a fan of that comment. So his girlfriend that he's been dating for over a year now, I mean, they're young, don't get me wrong. But I asked her, I was like, you know, she's going to go to school for chemistry or biology. She's a smart little girl. And, um, okay, so that's all I have for Harper James. So she's going to college too, but she's not graduated yet. We're going to do uh, some salt mountain. And so I'm going to show you the difference is in all these tubs. So this is salt mountain. This is lavender and speckles and Teddy bees. I, they're all so different. I do not care for this one because look at, this is how a lot of them came. They're broken. I prefer this one. I'm not, this is my first tub. So, and then I'm, I don't even know how this is going to come out of there, but we'll see. Uh, so I did ask his girlfriend, look how pretty this is once like, so what is your goal in life? Like, I'm sure she loved having her boyfriend's mother ask her that, right? Uh, so she does want to have kids. So I, I told him, haha, if you're going to date her, she's, she comes from a nice uh, family. And so I was like, good. I'm glad that she has that same vision. And, um, oh, this is such an amazing cookie blend. Oh my gosh. So I said, haha, she wants to have kids because like, I do want to be a grandma someday. I love my kids little and I miss that age. And so I was like, you know what I'm, doing here is I should have chopped this the other way because then I could have just put the tub on top of it to pick it up but there we go oh my gosh it smells so good I have another loaf in this I just love this scent but so I'm like I gotta chop this up so anyway I'm not gonna tell you everything but um campfire sugar bread she's very nice and so I was like eventually I'll get grand because I don't care what my kids think like come on I want some kids at some or grandkids at some point that's what I want for my kids they came from a family of seven how can they say they don't want children like seriously come on I mean if they truly don't I will of course respect that because I'm not the one raising their kids right so of course I respect their decision if that truly is what like my oldest doesn't she's not married she doesn't have kids so I don't know that she wants to she said she doesn't but she's always said that so it's a little different um she's a cat mom and uh, they are beautiful and she um she enjoy, you know she loves her cats and I'm totally fine with that like not everybody I told her um you don't have to have children I'm just saying that in general I would like to spoil some grandkids is all so all right lavender and speckles this is the only one I have to chop because this is I I ordered her new pre-order some of her more of her new formula but this was the original formula she had and then she changed it to the harder formula and now she went back to this so she could do loaves and tubs um so like i said i opened these to smell these are very like sturdy oh good it popped right out this is a gorgeous gorgeous scent uh so anyway my oh this is super soft nice uh so he went over there, so we'll see if he goes and I'll text him after this and see if he's going to get his iPad with her. If not, then I will probably go get it. I shouldn't though, right? Like I sh He should just go do it. Now I'm going to have to clean this after because, oh, this is sticky. Uh, oh my gosh, this smells amazing. So yeah, that's what's going on with my kiddos. So they start school. One of them has... My youngest is in fifth grade, so they have elementary tomorrow has their open house and then everybody starts on the sixth graders go tomorrow. So they're the only ones in the middle school and then the freshmen go tomorrow as well. So they're the only one. This is like super soft. Wow. They're the only ones in the building in the high school. So tomorrow is kind of an interesting day for the kiddos and then everybody goes on Wednesday. Um, so there's that. That is smells gorgeous. So they start, I know some people's kids already started, but uh, so that's kind of the plan with this week with the kids. And um, I think I, you guys, I've shared multiple times, like with um, my brother, he's having surgery tomorrow. Um, it's an eight hour surgery on his brain for a cancerous tumor. Um, he's like, he sent a text that he's in the fight of his life and he certainly is. And uh I've been like, it's been hard to do videos and not cry. So I had to do a lot of editing in that Teddy B's video when Tiffany sent me that gift because I just kind of lost it. Um, I was just feeling so overwhelmed and blessed by that. And, uh, 
Oh, sorry, I have more of Salt Mountain. Darn it, I didn't, I, now I think this formula you're gonna see because when she went to the tubs, I feel like this is a little bit softer. So we'll see how this one cuts because these, this is from 2022, this is 23. So, um, so he has surgery tomorrow. And like I said, it's gonna be a long one and I do have to work and I can't take off because uh, the nurse, or the, I'm sorry, the nurse practitioner and our uh, coordinator is off and I didn't really tell them a lot. So, cause it's a new job. I've been there three months now. This next week will be three months. So I didn't, I didn't say anything because, you know, I'm in my office and sometimes I'm do so this is harder than that other one. See how this crumbled? That other one didn't crumble. So I, it's a new job. So I'm like, not going to be like, oh, telling him everything. Cause it's like, I don't know. You don't want to come across as a mess, right? And not everybody knows my whole story about life and everything anyway. Um, they do know about my son because when I interviewed, you know, I, they asked, you know, what made me interested in this position because it's working with kids with complex medical needs, including kids with uh, quite a few kids actually we have with Down syndrome, which obviously my son had. And so when you're working, like they want to know why you're passionate about working. See, this is much softer. So she did, I'm pretty fairly certain she mentioned she changed it. Um, so obviously they know about my son because, you know, you're applying for this position. This is so dang good, you guys. Wow, this smells amazing. So they know about that. And I don't generally work. I, you know, I won't work on his birthday and I won't work on his anniversary. And I don't think they'll have a problem with that. And I'll just put my request off in. Um, but so, but I just didn't say anything about my brother because, um, I don't know. I just... Sometimes, yeah, I just don't want to share everything with everybody, but when my husband is mowing. Okay, I'm going to... So I didn't have any more of this. I, I literally think I'm out of a lot of mine. I don't even know if I have any left. But Casey sent me some, so these were all sent to me from her, so thank you again for that. Um, so yeah, so he has surgery tomorrow. Um, we do know the cancer, or the tumor is cancerous. So this is a lovely strawberry pound cake. Um, so the plan is after surgery and they excise and hopefully, you know, Lord willing, oh, this smells amazing. They have clear margins and then he will start chemotherapy after he heals, obviously from surgery, because, um, you have to be healed in order to start chemo. Um, so I was surprised because with my sister, now his is a grade three or stage four, I believe, or three, sorry. And my sister is four. So um, quite a difference, but obviously sucky when you find out both are pretty sucky. Not like it's stage one or two. I mean, if you're going to be told you have cancer, like, could it be an, I mean, I don't, I, it just sucks, right? Okay, this is what the carb, I love this. So the plan is heal and then, uh, start chemo to make sure. Um, but obviously I haven't, He's been having a hard time and he's a, he's a man, right? So it's not like he's real open, but I don't know if it's primary brain or if it like had moved. I don't really know at this point. He's not saying a lot. I think he's pretty overwhelmed. I remember when my sister was first diagnosed and she was like a zombie. And I remember that after Andrew passed away, like you don't, it's... It's like you are like in a trance. Like I just don't remember a lot of things after. And you know because you're just trying to cope. And I feel like that's how your body handles it. Okay this is berry brulee Twinkies. And so he's just I think he's kind of in shock. Well that smells so good. And so I haven't asked a lot of questions because I know it's very overwhelming and um, I don't get along with his wife. I don't care for her. She thinks she's better than everybody and she, believe me, she is not. And um, how dare you treat someone like that? Like I've been nothing but kind to her. And I used to babysit for them and, and then I became like when I was in college for nursing and then when I graduated they acted like, oh, you know, oh, we're too good for you. And I thought, um... Okay, first of all, how do you judge that? And um, my husband and I both have degrees. And, like, I don't know. They got in this whole tit-for-tat thing about, 
well, we have this and we have that. And I was like, do you even know? Like, why does that even matter to people? I don't understand that. Let's do some Zape next. This is Poison Apple. This is so good. Oh, my gosh. I found this last year, and I did order a scoop in this. Yummy. So, anyway, she just acts like she's so much better, and I just can't stand people like that. It's like, you don't know anything about my husband and I or my kids. And, my, you know, my other brother doesn't have kids. And so he just, so he's my brother who was just diagnosed as my oldest, and then my other brother, Gordon, is, he comes over a lot for, um, like family dinners and uh uh and okay here is blankets by the fire and he is he is like so he says how amazing my kids are my kids are like people say they're respectful I mean really people say a lot and I, my kids are pretty darn good kids of course I'm like there's that poem, The Mean Mom. That's definitely me. I don't care. My kids are have been taught to be respectful and kind. And luckily, my husband has always been, like, we're on the same page with parenting. And we have always said we're united. And literally, there, there's only been a few occasions where we had to take a time out and go talk without the kids. And um, so, but we, you know, we came back because it was like, I felt like we just had to get on the same page. But you don't do that in front of kids. So... My brother doesn't have kids, uh, and he's older than I am, and he just says, like, my kids are literally the nicest kids. He said, he's like, you and Brandon parent your kids, and a lot of people, he said, don't, you know, so I, we're going to do Britta's next. Casey sent me this one, too. I love the Exorcist. This is, like, my favorite patchouli ever. Why are you not focusing? Come on now. Um, so I, I take that as a compliment that my brother who doesn't have kids and, you know, like says how amazing they are. My kids are pretty darn cool. And, but I like, they've been, you know, just, you have challenges sometimes and you just have to be on them 24 seven. And, um, so my oldest brother just doesn't know my family or my kids. And so I just am offended that, I don't know, here's something twisted. So it's just interesting how people are and how they handle things in life. And I just, I don't know. So like, and my whole rambling of this is that his wife isn't very uh, chatty and uh, she's not the kindest person and he's pretty overwhelmed right now. So I'm trying to be respectful and get information as I can and just sitting here praying because that's all I really can do at this point, right? Is just pray for him. And he's in, ultimately, he's in God's hands, and I'm trusting God in that. No matter what occurs, I just have learned I really have to try to trust God because otherwise my anxiety gets me. Um, caramel kettle corn pretzel. And that's not easy, but I have to do it because I have no other option. I'm not going to sit here and stress about it. Um, so... I just am choosing that everything's going to be okay, and if not, then how do you conquer it? You just, you have to deal with it, right? Um, and I don't know, take it for what it is, I guess I've learned. And maybe I'm hardened because of the crap my sister has been through is like, you know, she was diagnosed seven years ago. What year was it? Andrew, so 17, because she, it was a year after Andrew had passed away, and um, so 17, so seven years ago, it would have been in, I think, July, here in July. Um, my date is different than hers, because she's like, well, we knew for how many days, and then we had to tell you, and it, it was her husband who called me, because he was freaking out, and just like, you need to talk to your sister, and she didn't want to tell, like, she didn't know how to tell me, but he's like, I need you to talk to your sister. And so I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? And then she told me on the phone, which was like one of the worst days of my life. Um, and my brother is not the healthiest person in the world at all by any means. And so sometimes our life choices can have consequences, sadly. All right, there's that one. That is messy, messy, but that's okay. Yummy. Love a chopped loaf. So anyway, um, and I say that in the sense of like, you know, we came from a pretty rough, okay, this is messy as heck. Okay, I got to change this. I can't do this. 
um, we came, we had a pretty rough childhood and, uh, to say the least. And I was the one sibling who went to therapy and like really worked, like tried really hard to work on like things. And I don't just accept an answer. I just, I truly try hard to work. Oopsie. I try hard to work on things in life and doesn't mean I'm perfect by any means, but like when you have, um, such trauma in childhood, it's like you've ever read books about abuse and neglect. Um, it's just a lot of trauma associated with siblings and just long-term how they handle things. And so I think for me personally, because I worked on, like, I did some aggressive therapy in EMDR, which is like a brain therapy. Uh, I feel like it has helped me a lot handle situations. Um, and especially when it comes to, um, I don't know, maybe it helps my faith too, right? Like, I don't know. I just feel like my brother is not a Christian and I worry about him as he's you know, preparing for this major surgery tomorrow. And they say eight hours. Does that mean that it's going to be eight hours? No, because you and I, but well, maybe you don't know, but sometimes they say that, but then they get in there and, you know, picture like MRIs and CTs can only tell you like it's an image, but it's not a hundred percent accurate. Like, and I've seen brain surgery before because in nursing school, I got to go and actually watch, um, like go and, well, it was actually a job. So through nursing school, I applied for this position and you were able to, um, oh, this smells amazing. You were able to go and we worked every week. We'd work with a specialty. So I, the week of neuro, we got to actually go in the OR and watch brain surgery, which was insane to see how they do it. I won't go into details, but, um, so it just blew my mind literally how, well people do considering they have brain surgery um and so I kind of understand and like even with the surgery we went in for we had to do like prep for it and we had to like learn about the condition and everything like that and it was fascinating and then to see it and then we went the next day to see how he did and then he went home within a couple days after this major brain surgery and it was insane and so I just feel like the body is so resilient to things, right? And it can handle a lot. And, um, but I also think they say something, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh yeah, we're going to say that surgery is this long. But again, every time they get in there, they can't see how a tumor is attached or how much it's attached. And so I know even with that surgery that I saw that it was definitely more involved than they originally had thought. And that's just the way sometimes it goes. Again, it, sometimes it's great, like good results, because then they get in there and it's not as bad, you know, so it just really depends. I have one more from Zape, and this is Black Magic Chai. So tomorrow will be a long day just because until I hear that he's out um, and then what next steps are, because they have a plan, but again, does that mean things can always change depending on surgery and how it goes? So I'm just kind of... I think maybe I'm just a little bit um, not sure what to think of the whole situation right now. And it was pretty shocking because um, he had a seizure and then everybody downplayed it until he started having memory and speech issues. And I was like, wait a second, what? I'm like, and my sister's like, well, well, they were saying maybe it wasn't a seizure. I'm like, they took his driver's license away and my aunt was with him who is a nurse too. And I was like, um, you don't just take your driver's license away if you don't think it's not a seizure. So I don't know if it was more my brother's denial or what the case was, but, um, so it took him a little bit to diagnose. And then once they kind of, they had the MRI, then it was really quick within a week of finding out what the plan was. So, all right, Dessa's Homespun, Huckleberry Lane, Marshmallow Fireside. So these were are her build bars and you don't have to do multiple scents but you can so some of these you'll see are just one color or one scent and then some i mix so that one's funny it's got a little hole so i do have a dessa's order coming not the same sense i don't think but i gotta warm through this so this is, smells amazing 
She's got an amazing huckleberry. Wow, this is beautiful. Um, so anyway, so it's kind of a, I don't know, I'm trying to not, like I've had to do some editing and really distract myself with videos because I really don't want to sit there and bawl my eyes out, right? Like it's kind of my own therapy session talking to you today, but whatever it is what it is. Um, so that's part of life. And like I said, my kids are starting school this week. Um, I, a lot of, I've heard a lot of you guys say your kids are already back in school, but maybe Wisconsin's different. I have no idea. Um, anyway, yeah, I, that's kind of what's been going on here. This, there's no way this is going to fit back in here. Oh my gosh. How the heck? I am not one who's going to put these in like super great because I don't know. I may have to get, I'm probably going to have to get another bag. Yeah. I'm not going to jam this in here. So I'm not going to close this. I'll close it when I'm done. Um, so, but crazy big things going on in my house. Okay. This is edge of midnight Palo Santo. I didn't put dates on these, but I, I think these were, oh, this, so you can't look at my labels faded. This one is from 2022, I think. Cause these are like, these are her newer stickers. Let's see, this is her older one. And the, yeah, so I think these are all 2022, these custom ones I did. So, um, but that's what's been going on in my crazy world. And I don't know. I mean, like life is so, you just never know what's going to happen. Let's see if I can cut this one a little better and get it back in here. But like these bags, they are just, I mean, they're perfectly fit in here. And I just, I can never get them back in there. Um, but my job is going well and I enjoy it. Like it's a lot more behind the scenes because I do a lot of prep for the patients and then you do a lot of troubleshooting and anything they need, basically I help them with. So if they call me and they need, you know, like if they're working with a DME, which is durable medical equipment and they can't get their diapers or they're having issues with their Foley catheter supplies or their G-tube supplies, then I, I call the company and battle it out with them. And believe me, oh, I got mad one day because they made an error and they knew about it a month ago and because the patients are um because of their insurance the company will only ship to them once a month but they made the error so I got so mad on the phone I was like but you made a mistake now this family is without the supplies they need for the month and I was like can I just pay for shipping like this is ridiculous and they refused and would not help my patient. I was furious. I was like, I'm making a note of this and I'm going to check in with this mom next month and you better make sure it's sent or I, like I even asked for their name and their like ID. They wouldn't give it to me. I asked to speak to a manager. They wouldn't let me speak to a manager. I literally was like ready to cry. I was so upset for my patient and their family. Like Lucas, I can't get this back in which is awesome. That's a lot of wax. I'm super happy, but I was so mad. But so my job is kind of like troubleshooting anything that they need. And so, and then if they have appointments, like sometimes they have five, six appointments a day. One of the other girls on the team, she will coordinate all those appointments. So they're the same day. So our patients, when they travel a couple hours, come one day and get everything that they need for, you know, a couple months done. So it's super cool. Um, you know, we, it's a lot of us troubleshooting and spending time on the phone so that they don't have to, because it's, it, like I said, it's through a grant. It's a pretty awesome program. And a lot of children's hospitals have it. Now we don't have a big children's hospital like Madison and Milwaukee, but our program is made from those. It's, it's replicated from their, like, I can't do it. Um, from what they do so they implemented this about nine years ago I think and um, it's a very awesome program but a lot of children's hospitals have them so if you have a kid with complex needs I would certainly ask if they have a complex um, complex care program because it's pretty awesome so yeah but I do I'm thoroughly enjoying that chestnuts roasting and open a fire this is amazing I really enjoy my job I love the patients, the kids, the families. It's just super cool. I don't miss the hospital. I'm sorry, but healthcare has changed in 20 years since I became a nurse. I don't, I don't like hospital settings. Patients are more, are unhealthier and, um, including pregnant women. Uh, there is so many complications they have. I, I was just 
And with my own PTSD, it was just too much. I just couldn't do it anymore. I wasn't enjoying it. I was crying on my way to work. So this bag is actually bigger, which I, I bet you this is going to go in now. Yep, it will. So I just, it was not good for me to be there anymore, even though, you know, hospital pay is great. Um, I think it is. I don't complain about my wage even working in a clinic. Okay, I appreciate that these bags are bigger because now I actually can get this in here. I have never complained about my wage as a nurse. Do I think nurses are overworked? Yeah, but so is everything. Like teachers are, police officers are. I mean, hocus pocus bake shop. I think a lot of people are overworked and underpaid. Um, sadly, that's the way it is. And with inflation, I feel like I don't make as much. But working in the hospital is not worth the stress. Now, I can work if I if they need me and I'm able to. But every time they put out a call for help I'm working my full-time job and it's usually during the day and I can't help or it's on a they need help on overnights and I work the next morning so I can't do it so honestly I think if I don't end up uh, working in the next couple months I'll just take myself off call for them haunted carnival I didn't want to cut this up look at how st oh the cat came off oh or the you guys where is it oh is it, is it, is it a cat Oh, it's a witch on a broomstick. Oh, I'm not going to cut this one. I can't do it. I'll cut it when I need it. This is, look at this. I mean, this is just gorgeous. I just, I can't. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me. Um, all right. And then I'm going to do some from Pumpkin Seed Wax. This is a shop on Etsy. Um, so yeah, if I don't end up working soon, I'll just not I'll just take myself off of the call position and be done with OB which is fine by me but anytime I go help I'm not going into labor I'm only helping on postpartum side because labor is just it triggers my PTSD from what happened with Andrew and I and I just it's not worth it to me money is not worth your trauma and your stress not well not for me it's not um I tried, and like I said, when I was crying every day, I was like, okay, Lord, this is not working for me. Uh, so I knew that um, I just had to find something else. It was just not for me anymore. I just couldn't do it. Bless your heart if you work in a hospital. It's just not work. Nursing is not what it once was, and the respect is not what it once was, and the patient ratio and the patient's health. Man, I, so I, you know, I do a lot of reading and digging into things, and it's very interesting that our country has how many more chemicals in our food than Europe does and allows. Like, you know, most of their sodas aren't even colored the same as ours because we allow so many dyes in our food, and I don't know. I feel like our government is poisoning us and you can call me whatever you want to call me but I still believe that I don't think our food is as healthy as it once was and um, that's why I try to can and like grow as much as I can and eat you know from my own garden because yeah I don't know okay this is Rose Girls Cider Lane Cookie Land whipped cream so I it's just very interesting to me I just feel like I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot more going on than in our food than there used to be. I feel like, I don't know, as, as a whole, I feel like there's just a lot more medical issues and um, in the world than there used to be. Like, I think about my grandparents. Like I said, my I was growing up and my, you never, like none of my aunts, one, I take that back, one had um, breast cancer. And it was... It was so, I mean, back then they did this radical mastectomies, which I did, I watched, well, I watched and I read a book on that because when my sister was diagnosed, I wanted to look into the history of breast cancer and I read this like massive book on medical history of cancer and breast cancer. And um, so my aunt, I knew, she was actually my grandma's sister, so she's my great aunt, not even my aunt. I'm just going to take this and put this in here and one of the bags just because it's not going to fit in those I just yeah that's why I like having extra bags okay so I only had her that ever like she was a great aunt so like I said not even an aunt and no one else had cancer like I didn't know anybody else and then when I became 15 my grandpa got cancer but my grandpa also worked in a uniral which is a tire factory before OSHA was involved 
and I can't remember what year OSHA like was started and really got hard after these factories because all these people were getting sick including my grandpa and not only him but like 10 to 15 of his co-workers that were friends died of rare cancers, including my grandpa. I'm going to do a sea sugar pumpkin cream cupcake. So his cancer was super rare as well as, like I said, his friends. And they had a lawsuit and it's still, I, they still are fighting it because they're just waiting for like my grandma's 93. They're literally waiting for, I think, all the family to die before they like, I don't know. They try to pay a dime. I it's really terrible what they've done and not admitting what they did. Because it's pretty obvious what happened when all these people got cancer and like I said, so really that was the only person I knew when I was growing up that two people and a great aunt and then my grandpa which was from work. And so I don't know. I just feel like nowadays it's like what is the rate of that it seems like it's pretty high so I don't know it's like chemicals is there food what's increasing our risks so I really don't know okay so let's do swanky I'm gonna chop up the rest of this beautiful loaf it's Palo bougie vanilla we can all have our theories and I'm just one of those people who likes to know and does reading and digging and goes down <laughs> rabbit holes and uh, so I just, 2020 really opened my eyes to the world, way of the world, and I'm okay with that. I definitely have changed my views on so many things, and I do try to eat a lot healthier now and watch what I consume and just be mindful of that. And last night I was awake thinking about that, like how I can't eat certain things because I feel like it's things in the product and how sick it makes me. And it's just insane that I can't have bread without getting sick or pizza and having terrible, terrible stomach issues. And yesterday or this weekend, I had a slice of pizza. And my son, who is 18, is like, you're going to get sick, mom. And I'm like, I know. Did I get sick? Yep. I Last night and today, I still don't feel good because I ate a stinking slice of pizza. Um, it's just blows my mind that how do, how are so many people having issues with gluten than ever before? So I do feel like things have changed. Um, I really do feel that way because I totally thought that was like not true. There's no way people can be gluten intolerant. Yeah. Until it happened to me and they just kept diagnosing me with IBS. And then I was like, then my doctor had me do an elimination diet Okay, this is from Tara. This is Fireside Marshmallow Sugar Cookie Cream Cake. I love this. Gorgeous. Uh, and so I did an elimination diet and took things out, obviously, little by little, and then introduced them back. And boy, when I ate bread or gluten, that was it. I immediately had symptoms of my IBS, technically, is what they diagnosed me with, because what, that's what they diagnose anybody with stomach problems nowadays when they rule out everything else and they don't know what's wrong with you, then you get diagnosed with that. Um, and so I really don't have much gluten ever. And when I do, I get sick. Okay. This is buttery toast and jam, pumpkin, pecan waffles, cider, lane, marshmallow, fireside cream cake. This is beautiful. This was double bagged because it, it, it was having a hard time closing. So what I will say about Swanky is use your stuff up because can you see how the wax is in here? Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see the oils. See the oils in this? So there's an, I've had a few issues with this. And now my stuff is stored nicely in cool, like dark place. And you'll see the newer ones don't, like this is newer. Well, and that's still 2022, but this doesn't have a sticker. So this might be older than, that. this might be 2021. But it still performs, but you can see that. So just be mindful because... Again, wax doesn't last forever. Um, so yeah, I, I like I'm very. I rarely have sugar. I try really hard not to. I obviously stay away from gluten, unless I just get a craving. Like I just want a piece of pizza that isn't gluten free, that doesn't taste like whatever. Now I do have pretty good gluten free pizzas. I found now finally, um, but I don't generally eat them because again I try to stay away from carbs. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just. I have a lot of thoughts on things and this is a wax channel but it's I can talk about whatever it's my channel um but yeah so 
I don't know. I just, and I will tell you that gluten makes me not feel good. My joints ache at night when I eat it. I get very irritable after eating it. I, I really do not feel good after eating it. I had, I had brain fog. I really had a lot of symptoms. And like I said, we tried it and that elimination diet. And as soon as gluten came back, I just felt like total trash. And so I know when I have it, I am not going to feel good for days. And so I'm sorry, but I, and maybe it's aging, but see, I was, they I thought I had cancer when I was 13 because I got really, really sick. Then they found out it was an ulcer actually. And that was because my grandpa was diagnosed with cancer and he was like my dad. And he was like the only nice person in my whole entire world. And, um, cause my mom was just a monster. And, um, so they found out I had an ulcer, so it wasn't, I mean, but they thought I had cancer because I was just, I lost a bunch of weight, couldn't eat, was puking. I just was so sick. Um, but yeah, I, look at how full this bag is. That's awesome. So I just think food and stress affects us very much. And, um, I'm sure my belly hurts today partly because of, um, stress and worried about my brother and just stuff in life, right? Well, that's really what's bothering me, I guess, but... Okay. Last of Swanky's Apple Pumpkin Strudel. I know this one was very popular, and so I wanted to try it. And it's from 2022, so I need to use it. So I don't know. You can tell me your thoughts and feelings, and that's totally fine if you dis disagree. But, yeah, see the oils again. So I need to use this, and you can, they're in here too. Um, But I know how I feel not having things and then adding them back and uh yeah man that's pretty sweaty so I'm glad I'm taking that out and gonna use this um so stress definitely plays a toll on us and I'm only gonna chop up half of this so I can get it back in here but uh, yeah I'm only gonna chop half and then I'm gonna put it back in this tin because I'm the oils are coming out and I'd prefer not to lose all those in the bag and it wasn't very nice outside so you guys I've been canning for three days and if you saw my I'm gonna post a video I it would have already been up it's gonna go up tomorrow of like my canning process and um, so usually I try to do about 80 to 90 quarts because we use about 70 and sometimes I give some away to my family I usually do I shouldn't say sometimes I have always given some to my sister and my brother and um, okay is that everything beside no it's not so I'm gonna do my sassy girl and then so well I appreciate y'all being here for my little therapy session and listening to me I'm gonna get a drink of water again you guys okay so have I shared my this is my obsession is the hydro drug so this one my husband got me for my birthday I was working nights and this went live at like 8 a.m. and it sold out and I was like devastated and then my birthday came and I, he gave me this and I was just like, oh my gosh, you, he literally went online and ordered this for me. I have about four of these. They don't leak. I love these mugs, man. At the clinic, I drink three of those a day. So, all right, jammin cookies. I need to finish this or I want to finish this. So, um, but yeah, so that's kind of been my life. And thanks for listening to this Ted talk <laughs> about health and cancer. That's friggin' sucks. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sorry that my table is shaking because this is not like the sturdiest table I'll try. And okay. And sassy girl is like harder wax. So if I microwave this, I will tell you that it won't break as bad as this, but I'm not, I, I can't do this when my kids are all home. I'm sorry about my husband mowing. I didn't tell him I was going to make a video. So otherwise he would. I mean, he's primarily down the hill, but he has to come up the hill to mow around by the chickens and stuff. So that's what he's doing. He's mowing by the chickens. Um, but this crumbles, but it will do better if you microwave it for about 40 seconds. Check it. And if you need to, just do it in like 10 second increments. Okay. So there's that. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad I'm doing this separately. Okay. It's fall Charlie Brown. Oh, my nickname is Charlie. Uh, my grandpa gave me that nickname and love my grandpa. Obviously I shared that with you multiple times. He was like my dad. He was amazing. 
Um, he did not like my mom. He called CPS my mom so many dang times. Like, she gets so mad because we knew it was my grandpa. I mean, I did anyway. <laughs> I mean, I assumed it was. So it could have been my aunt's. I mean, she just was a bad mom, and my grandpa did not like her. Um, she was very, very unkind, and she was not a good mom, and no. I don't really speak to her, honest, I don't speak to her, I should say, because she said some very hateful, mean things to me a, a couple years ago, and then when Andrew passed away, okay, so it's been more than that, so it's probably been 10 years, no, maybe 8 years, and she said some really, like, bad things, and I was just like, you know, at some point you need to get help and therapy for your, your life. Like, she's just a hot mess express. And, um, man, these colors are beautiful. And she, when Andrew passed, she said, I deserved it. And I was like, I deserve to lose a kid, huh? And I'm sorry, but whatever. My mom is just, my mom is just honestly jealous because she, my mom has never been happy in her life. I don't think I've seen the woman happy unless she was high on drugs or drunk off out of her mind, which is that really happiness? No, because you're not, you're using other medication or other meds to make you feel happy, which is not true happiness. And so my mom, like she was mean when I got married, like she just, anytime I do well, she just doesn't like it. But she said, I deserve to lose a child. And she had no rationale for saying such a terrible thing. And who the hell says that about to anybody in this world? I would never, I don't have enemies, but I would never even wish that upon an enemy in this, in my life to wish someone to lose a child. So when she said that, um, and she posted that on Facebook, you guys, like I was just, I cried even harder. I was like, what kind of evil monster says something and especially about their daughter and why would you ever say somebody deserves to lose a child? And even if you don't like me, why should my son have died because you don't like me? Like, if I die, that's different. And then you can say, well, good, that evil, whatever she wants to say about me. But she said, I deserve to lose a kid. Now, please explain that. I just, I can't with that woman. Uh, fall Fun Carnival. This is a favorite of mine, and this is so much better warmed. So when she said that, I just, I was like, you know what? I've tried with you for my whole life. I just, you just have to stay away from me. After she said that, and she was real nasty on Facebook. Um, and I didn't engage with her, but people really went after her on Facebook. Like, how could you ever say that about your daughter? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? And that's my mother. And um, I told her she was not welcome at the service. And if she came, there would be consequences because... I am sorry, I will tolerate a lot of people's mouths, but when you say something so hurtful when I lost a child, I have zero, zero respect for you. If you ever say that, I'm I'm not going to apologize. I think if you ever utter those words out of your mouth about somebody, you need therapy, and you, you're going to stand before God for that statement because that is just pure evil. Nobody deserves to lose anybody, but if you've ever lost a child, how dare someone say such an evil thing? It is literally hell on earth. If you feel that that's a comment that you should say, you better get some mental health because you're just a crappy human being. I, I would never, ever, ever, ever say that. That's like saying, after watching my sister, like if somebody said, oh, they deserve cancer, I'm just like, damn, you you have freaking problems to say that about anybody in this world. The, there's just nothing. How could you wish evil into someone's body? Cancer is just is is de is the devil i think i just it just seeks to destroy it like cancer is a monster a monster so i just don't have oh my gosh it smells amazing i don't have a lot of respect and look at how beautiful these colors are um i have no respect and for anybody who says such evil things i think that's why i just don't tolerate people saying stupid things because i've literally grown up with a terrible mother and um if I wrote a book, like my therapist told me, you should write a book once. I'm like, no, I should because of just maybe people would understand like to have grace and kindness for others if they just knew where they came from because she was truly a monster. And I've, like I said, I'm the only sibling out of five kids that went to therapy and no, I'm not a perfect freaking person by any means, but I am a good person. And I think truly therapy has changed my life and God, obviously God has changed my life so, so, so much. And, um, 
I truly do seek to try to be a good person. But I just, you know, that's why I think I don't have patience for people running their mouths and saying mean things because you never know what somebody's been through or going through. So when people say bad things about people, I just don't want to participate in their comments. And especially in, like, I make YouTube because it's freaking fun. I am not going to engage in gossip or rhetoric or anything. I'm not going to engage with people. If you're going to be mean, just don't come to my channel. Don't come to me because I have zero patience for it. Um, I just literally have been through so much of my life. I just can't tolerate stupid people's comments. Like, you have no idea what people have been through, so just sh shut up. I just cannot tolerate people anymore in this world when they say things or you don't like somebody because of their political views. Like, everybody has a right to to like whoever they want, to vote for whoever they want. There's freedom in this country. Um, I just, I can't tolerate stupid. I just cannot. And if you don't like that, I mean, then you're in the wrong channel because I have, I have an opinion. That's for dang sure. Amptaville. Um... I can't wait for Julie to open up. Speaking of somebody I enjoy, she has like always been the kindest to April and I when we've gone there. She just, her and her family were so welcoming every time we were there. I thoroughly enjoy her and her family. She is a great person. She has been through hell this year, uh, truly hell. Um, not only to lose her beautiful son, but to go through what happened with her business, like, again, I'll never understand things, but I do think that we have to trust God. I don't understand the process or why God can't intervene. I mean, I'm not going to understand that. I will just say that one day when I face him, maybe he'll have an answer. But the reality is I won't care because I'll be standing in front of him. So really the ultimate thing is, and it doesn't matter because you're in front of God and you're going to be at peace and joyful and I'm going to be skinny in a bikini on the beach. I mean, hey, we can all have dreams of what heaven is like. I'll be, I have the perfect singing voice because my voice is like not gnashing teeth together. Um, like that would be my one thing in heaven. I, I can't wait to sing like an angel. Um, but ultimately we're not going to care because we're going to be with the Lord, right? So ultimately me saying, what happened to JFK? Who was involved? Like, seriously, that would be one question. What happened to Elvis? Okay, just tell me what, what really happened. Um, and why take Andrew? Why? Why did the doctor, you know, not pay attention to his low blood sugar and his low oxygen? Why didn't his life matter to her? Why did he end up with a brain injury? Why couldn't he have stayed? Why couldn't I have been his mother forever? You know, we all have questions like that. But again, ultimately, when we're standing before God, I don't think we're going to ask. I think we're just going to be enamored of his glory, and I'm thankful for that. And I did share this on Instagram. I have talked to my sister a lot about this as well, because obviously face with can you know, she has cancer, and we've talked a lot about God and death. And I, what I told her was, the only thing I can tell you is the day that I had almost died from my postpartum complications, um... I went into the OR and I told them I'm okay if I die. Like, But anyway, I just told her there was this peace that I had going into the, like I cried the whole way down the hallway. Don't get me wrong. I told my husband goodbye to the kids and make sure that they know I was a good mom and show them pictures and like, you know, because it was bad. Everybody was crying. It was not good. And then as soon as I got to the OR, this peace came over me. I, I, I cannot even begin to understand what it, like, I can't explain, look at how beautiful this is. I can't explain the peace because it was something I've never felt in my whole entire life. But I will tell you that I yearn for that peace someday. Not now. I want to be a mom to my kids. But that peace you'll, is just something I just, I think I've read a lot of books about death near death experiences and mine wasn't like dramatic by any means I mean in the sense of like a massive car accident or something but like it wasn't good right and people mention a lot about the peace that they felt and I in that moment I knew what it was and so I've talked a lot about that with my sister saying in the end that's why I wasn't afraid to die in that moment I told the OR before like they put me under like it's okay if I die don't be sad oh they did not like me saying that as a mom right a new mom and but I was okay if I died because of that peace 
<laughs> Look at how full this is. <laughs> um, so I just want to say that I do know that love and I know that peace that I felt is nothing I can ever explain. So I've talked to my sister a lot about that. That you won't, oh my gosh, I'm such a mess. You won't be afraid is what I told her because of the peace. And I, like I said, it was just so amazing. And I just, it was like, it was like laying on, a, on the beach on a hot day and that sun shining on you and you just feel so calm and zen. And then just magnify that times like a bazillion, right? Um... So, you know, life is not easy by, oh, sorry, this is Sawdust Day is another favorite, obviously, because I have a loaf in it. And I do buy loaves, especially if I'm going to warm them in my open concept. So a lot of these I do in, in that space. So that is why I bought them in loaves. Honestly, Julie's is, I just love the presentation. I hope that she, they stay with the same chunk concept because I absolutely love looking at these. And then as this colors bleed into this, like, look at how pretty this is. So I don't know. I just know that I've experienced that peace. And I, I, I feel like obviously God had a reason for me living. I mean, Andrew lived another, you know, he lived 15 more months. My husband jokes that he probably wouldn't have survived if I had passed away because, you know, Andrew was pretty complex and he was hard work. I only worked casual or no, I worked part time when I had him. I always worked part time with our kiddos always until they just recently um, because mom was number one and we have always lived within our means of being able to afford things um, because we knew that I was going to be home. Like my cars are not new, but they're a couple of years old. Like we don't, I don't buy new cars because I want to being home was more important to me ever than like a car that you're going to drive. You live in your home, you're raising your kids. Like that's personally for me, I'm a traditional wife. I wanted to be home with my kids. And so my husband joked that he knew God wasn't going to take me. He was the only one who wasn't crying that day. My friends and everybody was hysterical, but he didn't cry. Uh, he was very calm, but he's like, I knew you weren't going to die because God would not leave me alone with the kids and especially Andrew. And I was like, wow, I'm glad you had such peace. Nobody else did, including the staff, but He's a very, he, 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 he's a spiritual man. So he knew God wasn't going to take me. I wasn't so confident and nor was anyone else, but he certainly was. Um, so he jokes like I knew God wasn't going to take you because he knew that Andrew needed me. And I think there's lots of reasons that he kept me and in, including for my sister and just to be here in any way that I can help her anytime. And when she was first diagnosed and going through aggressive chemo, um, I had my niece a lot because when my sister was diagnosed, she was only 15 months old. So I, I did take, or I did help her. I shouldn't say take. I helped her with my niece because um, my son was in 4K. And so every day I would go to her house between 8 and noon and help her and get the baby to nap and feed her or feed her, put her, get her to nap. And then by the time she woke up, my brother-in-law would be home. So, and if days were not good, then I would take the baby with me to my house and then her husband would come and get him if like she had had chemo the day before then I would just take her those next days um and that's a wrap um so that is everything besides teddy bees so um like life just isn't easy but I do know ultimately that in the end we're all going to be with Jesus um that's my belief maybe it's not yours and that's totally fine but that's my foundation and I've tried to live without God. I was very angry after Andrew passed away. I tried yelling and arguing with him and I really felt I didn't love God anymore because he took my son from me. And I really, really questioned if there even was a God and what this big world was about. But I was struggling mentally and with therapy and time, it helped. So, um, Thanks for joining me for this little therapy TED Talk. I appreciate you guys. If you watch this, if you hung out with me, if you listened while you were cleaning your house, because that's what I do sometimes too. Um, I appreciate that. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed day. Bye.